I'm doing this video by request from a couple of my viewers that were asking me to do something about how to solder. They have had some interest in some of my uh, projects, yet they're a little bit unsure on how to do the soldering. So I thought that would be a good idea for a video. And really the only thing I can give you as far as advice is you have to learn by doing. And let me repeat that. You can only learn by doing. And by doing, that means go out and buying yourself a solder practice kit uh, or two. And here's an example. Uh, this is a solder practice kit from Elenco. And you can buy it like this, just separately. And it just has a few components on the back. Or you can buy it for about $4 more. And it will come with a soldering iron like this one. And it will also come with a little pair of diagonal pliers, sort of like this. And if you click on the link that I'm providing, you'll go to my webpage where I have a learning the solder page. And I go through much more detail and background than what is possible on the video. And for example, here's basic soldering technique, which I will cover in the video. And here, by the way, is the kit that I recommend. This is the kit that I just showed you with a combination of the soldering iron and diagonal pliers. You see it's less than $15. So if you're not sure if you want to get into soldering or not, this is not a very expensive way to determine whether or not it's something for you. And I go through some soldering techniques and parts identification uh, that you may run across. And here is a typical board that you may find in one of my RV projects and some additional recommended solder practice kits. I've designed the web page and the video to complement each other. And first and foremost, I really want to talk about the soldering iron. You want something that's around 25 watts, like this one is. And this, again, is made by Elenco. And they give these things away free a lot of times when you buy their kits. And what's nice about it is you can actually replace the tips if you need to. And they do have several different types of tips as well. So this would be the very minimum that I would look into buying. And... If you bought it by itself, you can buy it just for a few dollars. Now, when I was a young guy, and I ended up buying another one because I liked it so well, and this is a WP-25 made by Weller, and I have used one of these for years and years, and the last one just burned out, so I ended up buying another one. And like the less expensive Elanco, you can buy replacement tips, and you can buy different tips as well. So this is another example of uh, a nice soldering iron uh, that you could use. For the last 10 years or so, uh, I've been using this, and this is another Weller. And this is a WLC 100. Um, it'll set you back around 38, 40 bucks. It really just depends on how much you want to get into it. So this is a 40 watt, but this does have a temperature control which is really nice because sometimes 25 watts isn't quite enough and especially if you're wiring say wire together or something like that you may want to run this up a little bit so you know this is not a bad deal this is not a bad soldering station like I said I've used this one for quite some time however my current soldering setup is this really nice Hakel FX888D and it's a digital one and you know you just turn power on and it gives you the temperature in either Fahrenheit or Celsius. This one also is ESD safe which means that it's not going to have any electrostatic discharge on your components. And again like the others you can buy spare tips. This one has maybe 30-35 different size tips available for it so by far you know this has more tips available. This is around $99 or so, so it's not cheap. The one I bought was around $125 and it included 50 bucks worth of extra tips. That was a really good investment on my part. And this is the one I currently use for most all of my stuff now. It's got a real nice feel to it and that's what I like. Now there are two types of component. One type of component is called feed through and a newer type component is called SMT or SMD which stands for service mount technology or service mount device and by far the older the two types 
are the through hole and through hole just simply means that you have a component like this and you just bend it and then when you put it into a circuit board the circuit board has holes in it and then this thing just actually goes through the holes such as such as that and then once it's down on the board then you would just solder it to the board and by the way when I build these boards I try as much as I can to make them through hole because they're simpler for novices to solder but I can't always do that for a couple reasons number one is you can get more components on a circuit board by using surface mount technology than you can with through holes so sometimes I have to do it for that reason other times a lot of the newer ICs the devices they're only available on through hole so you know it's, it's the newer of the two technologies and sometimes you have to go by those and here's an example of a surface mount device and you can see these are sometimes called chips and you can see that they're quite small and they often have the same electrical characteristics as an equivalent through hole so if you really want to explore on whether you want to do this or not you can also buy a surface mount practice kit here's one and this one actually I bought for my wife for Valentine's Day it's just a little Valentine's heart and maybe we'll build this one as far as the demo and all these kits are fairly simple and they don't really do a whole lot this one though when you're done if you have a little power supply you can just plug it in and it's just a little do nothing set of LEDs that flash but it at least lets you know that you built the thing right so it will at least do something each one of these kits I bought uh, for this video and they're not that expensive these every one of these are around ten dollars or less so here's a surface mount technology this is a uh, flashing heart with uh, SMD LEDs so if you want to get into the SMD side this is one you can get and as I said uh, this one is similar to this kit uh, different color and the nice thing is it has different sizes on here so if you build the flashing part you only have to populate the center but then they've got all these on the outside to do some more practice with and here's uh, you know like I said the through hole kit that we looked at we also have a, an electronic cricket and if you got some children you want to kind of introduce uh, you can buy this jitterbug and it's just it even comes with a battery and it's just a little thing that just kind of vibrates around on the floor and uh, <laughs> your pet might like it too if you really want to investigate whether you want to do this or not I'd buy one of each you know I'd buy a surface mount and I would also buy through hole now again I'm gonna come back to this one I recommend for the first kit you buy this and the reason for that is that it has a pretty good manual and this manual how to identify resistor values uh, how to do the polarity marking uh, kind of goes through the color code and the resistors and it gives you an introduction on soldering uh, types of soldering devices you know we kind of cover that a little bit uh, then it shows solder practicing uh, shows you how to repair your printer circuit board if you mess it up and it shows you also how to do some desoldering and in fact there's even some desoldering braid here and let's just open this up real quick and we've got uh, some solder braid here we actually have some solder now this is lead free solder and I really don't like the lead free as well especially when you're starting out because it takes a little more temperature and it's a little more finicky uh, you can buy the stuff uh, that's 6040 solder that I have used and always use and uh, this particular stuff is made by Kester which is some of the best you can get now some of the stuff is made in China I just don't like the stuff as well because uh, you can buy Kester solder or you can buy this MG chemical solder that's made in the US and it's not that much more expensive and it's better as far as I'm concerned 
In sewing this Alunco kit, it's kind of nice because I put all the components uh, on a little card like this and that kind of helps you identify them. And usually in the manual there's a recommended order of uh, how to do the soldering and I do that as well. If you do one of my uh, projects, if you go on my website, there will be a document that you can download and it just has kind of a drawing like this and it shows which part that goes where and the recommended order. And you can buy one of these little devices that you can put your component on here and you can help bend the leads so that you have a nice looking lead like that. But I don't usually bother with that. Now the first trick to soldering is to keep your tip clean. And remember this is hot. And there's two ways to do that. Number one is you can get a sponge like this and just dab your tip on there. Or you can get one of these little devices here that have like a steel wool. And you just run it through here. I don't like this as much, but I actually use both. I use this to get the excess solder off. And then I'll often just hit it like that. You want to put the soldering tip on and touch both pieces of metal and hold it there. You want to flow the solder onto the pad. You don't want to flow the solder onto the tip. If you flow the solder on the tip like this, then you're not going to get the pad hot enough and it's going to be a cold solder joint and it just won't work very well. So you want to put this on for just a couple seconds and then just take your solder and just touch it to the pad. When you're done, you should have a real nice shiny uh, sheen to the solder joint. Again, we want to hold the soldering tip to both pieces of metal. And then we want to just flow the solder into the metal like that and then let go. And with SMD, there are different sizes. And it shows up here uh, in this first column. This is called 1206, which is 12 mils uh, long, 6 mils wide, 805. And then over here we have 0603 and then finally 0402. And you can see how much smaller that one is compared to this one. And when we're doing SMT, uh, what I used to do is to get a small piece of Kapton tape, which is an electrical tape that uh, has a high melt temperature, and see how I can just uh, secure that. And then, just like before, we just hold the soldering tip kind of to both pieces. There we go. You can pull the tape off. And then we can do the other side. The way I do it now is I simply put a small blob of solder on one part, then take the piece in the tweezers and just tack it. And then I take my thumbnail and put a little pressure on it, and you can feel it snap in place. And then what you want to be sure of when you do this is to make sure that that little blob of solder is both on that pad and climbs up to the little metal on the side. It does wick a little bit. Okay, so that's basically the two uh, forms of soldering. And remember, the number one rule of soldering is to always heat the solder joint with your tip and let the solder flow into that joint. And I saw a YouTube video the other day where a guy was demonstrating the soldering and he was taking his soldering iron and doing this. You don't want to do that. You want to take this and hold it down there until it's heating both pieces of metal. Use your solder to dab it. So we're done with the soldering practice kits. We have the heart that's uh, surface mount. And we have a cricket which is pretty darn annoying to tell you the truth.
So we're going to set him aside. Next, our basic through-hole soldering practice kit. You know, these are basically do-nothing things. But this is my favorite here, this little bug. The dog is going to love that. Okay, so hopefully you got some ideas here as far as how to learn a little bit about soldering. And uh, maybe uh, if you uh, do one or two of these things, they're not expensive, um, you might decide to do some of my projects.